Have you ever wondered what it is about your favorite song that gets your heart pumping when the beat drops or you hear your favorite song or lyrics? In this episode, we're going to be talking about song form. Whether it's 32 bar blues or a simple verse chorus form, every hit song you love in some way or another follows a popular format. So whether you're an aspiring songwriter or simply just curious about what makes a hit song a hit song, stick with us to learn why song form matters and the role it plays in catching your listeners' ears and keeping them hopefully wanting more. Hey guys, I've always thought about song form as being a breakdown of the song. You know, when you're listening to a song and you hear distinct sections, maybe you even anticipate a certain section coming up. What are your thoughts and understandings about song form? Song form is helpful because it gives your song structure and a natural flow. To distinguish the different sections of a song, sometimes the letters or terms which you may have heard before, like verse, chorus, and bridge, are assigned to those sections. Typically, those different sections of music are a musical representation of what's happening in the lyrics. Breaking the songs up into these digestible chunks makes the message and the moods of the song a little bit more easy to understand for the listener. So the verse of the song is typically telling the story, and the chorus gives you the main message of the song. So the verse is kind of like the part that you just kind of bob your head along to, while the chorus is the part that you full-on jam out to, to lyrics that you know at the top of your lungs. I think the concept of form can be a bit unnecessarily confusing due to over-explanation. But basically, when you hear something shift in the song, or you hear something repeating, you know something's up. To talk about this a little bit more, we're doing a deep dive into Post Malone's hit song, Circles. When we talk about form, there are lots of smaller bits and pieces that comprise the sections of a song. For example, what you're listening to right now is the intro or introduction to Post Malone's Circles. For now, we're going to focus on the bigger sections like verse, chorus, and bridge. And right, naturally, when the singer comes in for the first time, we call it verse 1, just like in this example. Occasionally, though, a singer might start off with another part of the song, like a tag, that repeats. But this song follows a pretty standard verse, chorus, bridge format with an added intro at the beginning. There are some things to notice about what you're hearing in the first verse. Aside from the notes that the singer is singing, also known as the melody, it's what instruments are playing and what kind of sound texture they make up. The texture here is relatively simple. We've got drums, bass, and then some background instruments creating some harmony, like the guitar. Well, there are a couple of different indicators to look out for, but for the most part, when you're jamming out to a song, you can usually tell just based off of timing when the next section should start. In music, we call this an eight bar structure, which indicates when the sections change. Each of these bars contains four beats or four counts, and these keep the music feeling even and square. We'll be talking about beat in a later lesson, but for now, if you start at the beginning of verse one and follow that math by continuing to eight, eight times, you'll end up at the next section. So you're saying that there are two groups of, four groups of eight bars. Each has 32 beats in it, but essentially if I count to eight, eight times, then I'll know I'm at the next section. Or you can follow your ear. Another clue we usually have is some sort of drum hit that cues us to the next section. For those of you listening at home, be sure to check out our link in the description that explains eight bar structure. So now we're transitioning to the chorus and there are some identifying factors that you should know about in a good chorus. This is the part of the song that you can count on getting stuck in your head nine times out of 11. Typically the lyrics in the chorus are repeated more or less exactly the same way every time. And the song tends to revolve around the lyrics in the chorus. Also, something that is pretty common in pop songs, although it's not a rule of any sort, is that this is often where you'll find a singer actually sing the title of the song. That's the case here in Circles. And some other examples of this are Harry Styles' Adore You and Hers' Focus. Aside from the lyrics, we can hear contrast in the instrumentation here. There's a more full sound coming from the background instruments, 
and the melody is higher than it was before, painting a contrasting mood. Okay, so we've covered verse 1 and the chorus, and those two repeat themselves. Let's talk about the bridge. A bridge isn't in every song, but it's definitely something you've heard before. It usually comes after the first or second verse and is new material, meaning we haven't heard it before. And it's usually used to highlight the climax of the song. Form is super important because it gives a backbone to your song. Without a cohesive form, the meaning of the song could be a little bit ambiguous and not be understood by your listener. Luckily, form is a pretty intuitive thing to grasp. If you follow a logical storyline or progression in your lyrics, a lot of these different elements will fall into place. Now it's time for a song scramble. So far, we've talked about how Post Malone's song Circles is broken up into a few different sections. We have the intro, the verse, the chorus, and the bridge, otherwise known as form. We're going to mix up the form a little bit and see if you can keep up. We'll play each section, and then you decide how we have scrambled the form. Thanks for watching!